in chapter 1 or chapter 14 of verse 1, look at what it says. It says, now the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel that they turn and camp before Pihathoroth between Migdal and the sea opposite of baal Sephon, and you shall camp before it by the sea. Now the first thing I want you to, to understand is that God led them there. After they came out, and imagine they came out with great victory, celebration, and then God said, okay, now I want you to lead the people, and I want you to camp encamp them right here by the Red Sea in this wilderness. So God led them there. And then the Bible says this, for Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are bewildered in the land, and the wilderness has closed them in. Then I will harden Pharaoh's heart so that he will pursue them. And I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over his army that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. Verse 10. Now when Pharaoh drew near, when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them. So they were very afraid, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Then Moses, and, and, th and then they said this to Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you dealt with us this way, to bring us up out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt, let us, leave us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? Listen to this. Listen to what they said in the midst of this trial. They said this, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than we should die in this wilderness. Look at what fear does. Look at how fear has a tendency to get us to react. Amen? Irrational. Not, we don't think straight. Amen? When that's why it's never good to make decisions when you're really going through it. When you're emotionally high or you're emotionally low. Amen? Because sometimes we're not thinking straight. Verse 13. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians, your enemy whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. He says, the Lord will fight for you. The Lord will fight for you. You just hold your peace. And then the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, help me now to speak and communicate this word for this congregation at this particular time, for your honor and your glory, in Jesus' name, amen. Tell the people to move forward. Apparently, after they begin to complain to Moses, Pastor Moses, everything that was happening and blaming him, you did this to us. Why did you bring us out of this siege at the moment they experienced the, the, the biggest trial of their life. Listen, they just came out of victory. They just came out of freedom. God just delivered them by his strong arm. And they were all celebrating. And they came out celebrating this great victory. And then God leads them to camp by this wilderness. And, 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 and before them was the Red Sea. And as they're camped there, and I imagine them being there, celebrating, pitching their tents, setting everything up, probably singing songs of praise, singing songs of joy. And then all of a sudden, somebody looks over and they see the Egyptians, the Egyptian army closing in, drawing near. In other words, all of a sudden, right after great victory comes the greatest trial of their life. The greatest trial of their life. And because they were new, freshly delivered out of Egypt, they, many of them didn't know how to handle this trial. And many would ask, well, why would God allow this? I mean, you know, everything was going so well. Man, I got saved. I'm born again. I've been going to church. I've been doing everything. And man, I feel so good. And all of a sudden, the biggest trial of your life. Ever been there? 
after such a great victory, all of a sudden a great trial? This is what they were experiencing, uh, the biggest trial of their life. Now the Egyptians are closing in. And so when they see they right away they became fearful. In other words, what's the opposite of fear? Faith. Before they had to believe God and believe the Moses, their leader, that, that he heard from God and follow them, and God was faithful and delivered them. But all of a sudden, when they're facing this biggest trial of their life, their faith was depleted, and now they begin to become fearful because fear is the opposite of faith, and faith is the opposite of fear. And in their fear, they started voicing things. They started complaining, and they started attacking Moses, saying, you did this to us. Why didn't you just leave us in Egypt? We were better off in Egypt than to be out here and die in this wilderness. Were you really? Were you really? Amen. And, and so they started complaining because that's what fear does. And, and I'm sure because of the uncertainty of not knowing, you know, what's going to happen. I thought everything was going well. I thought if I gave my life to Christ that, that everything was going to be better. And now I'm facing this biggest trial of my life. And there's that uncertainty of now what's going to happen now? What, how, how am I going to get through this big trial? And so they started complaining, they started doubting, and so I'm sure Moses went to the Lord because God told Moses, stop crying to me. Why are you crying to me? You get up like a leader and you tell God's people to move forward. You tell them that I said to move forward. That doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter how big of an army is coming against you, how big of a trial. You tell my people to just keep moving forward. Now, the question I have to ask myself, how in the world was God going to move them forward through this big trial? You got the Egyptian army coming and closing in on them, and they're stuck in the wilderness. They can't go anywhere. They can't go to the right or the left. They can't move forward. And the reason why they can't move forward, because they camp by the big Red Sea. You all know the story. We've all seen the movie of Moses, right? And they're camped by the Red Sea, and they can't. So my question was, God is telling them, move forward, but how are we going to move forward? I mean, don't you see? I mean, in the natural, in the natural, listen, there's no way possible I could move forward. So the question is, how was God going to move them forward through this great trial? Well, first of all, number one, God will always move you forward by faith. Everybody say faith. God will always move us forward by faith. The only way that you can ever move forward in the face of the greatest trial, when all doors are shut, when it looks like there is no way, when God, when we know that God is able to make a way, listen, it'll always be by faith. Because once Moses told them, he, when they complained and they were complaining and they were afraid and they were fearful, Moses, hold up, time out, shh, quiet. He says, don't be afraid. Moses finally takes charge. He, he becomes a leader he's supposed to be. He stands there and says, hold it, time out, don't be afraid. In other words, have faith. Don't be afraid, just trust God. If God brought us this far, have faith. Now, what is faith? Faith is believing. Faith is trusting God. Faith is believing and trusting God for all of your circumstances, all of your situations, and all of your needs. That's faith. It's trusting who God is. What did the Bible say? He who comes to God must believe that he is God. He is the creator. He is the owner. He is the giver of life. He is everything. God is God. And so when it comes to trusting God, we must trust in three things. Number one, first of all, we must trust in the omniscience of God. 
that God is omniscient. What does that mean? That means that God is an all-knowing God. When you trust in God, you got to know as a believer that God is omniscient, that God is an all-knowing God because he's God. He knows all things. He knows every thought. He knows every motive. He knows every intention. He knows everything about us. He knows where we've been. He knows where we've gone. Amen. He knows all things. How many believe that? That God is omniscient. He's all-knowing. So if that is true, and I know it's true, amen, then God knew what the children of Israel were going through and what they were facing at this particular time because God is all-knowing. He knew that Pharaoh was going to change his mind. He knew that his heart was going to get hardened. God knew that Pharaoh was going to gather his soldiers and gather his chariots and want to pull the children of Israel back into slavery and back into bondage. God knew all along what was going to happen because God is an all-knowing God. But if God is an all-knowing God, not only does he know what you're going through, not only does he know what you're facing, not only does he know what the doctors have said, not only does he know what those debtors, are, those, those, those ones that we're in debt to are saying, or the IRS might be saying, oh, have mercy, Lord. Not only does he know that he knows that he knows what you're going through, what you're facing, what you're going through right now, but God also knows how he's going to get you through because God is with you, God is with us, and God is still God. He's God in the victory, and he's God in the valley. He's God in the victory, and he's God in the fight. God doesn't change. So God is all-knowing. Remember that. That God knows what's happening. Sometimes we feel, God, where are you? Where are you, God? God, what happened? Everything was going so good. And all of a sudden, bam. What happened? I don't understand, God. Where were you? Why did you let this happen? Ever been there? I've been there many times. But that's when we have to trust God. That's when we have to believe in God, that God is omniscient. He knows all about it, but he also has a divine strategy how he's going to get us through it. To God be the glory. Amen? The second thing that when it comes to trusting God, we must trust in the fact not only that God is omniscient, but God is omnipotent. Ooh, what does that mean? That means that God is a God of all power. God is all powerful. He is an all powerful God. He is a God that never runs out of power. Power. His, the blood still has power. There is no lack of power in the hands of God. And we have to understand that. The Bible says nothing, I said nothing, is too hard for God. Amen. What may be impossible for human beings, what may be impossible for man, is possible with God. Why? Because God is God. He's all powerful. In other words, it didn't matter how powerful that Egyptian army was, how many weapons of warfare that Egyptian army had, how strong of chariots that that Egyptian had. Listen, God was more powerful than any Egyptian, any Pharaoh, than anybody, anybody they could have faced. God was more powerful. In other words, God is bigger and better than any trial or tribulation that any Christian could ever face, my friend. And we have to trust in that fact that God is all-powerful. Nothing is too hard for my God. He is more than able to do above and beyond what I could ever imagine or even comprehend according to his power, his power, his power. He is able and he is more than able. The third thing that we must trust in when it comes to trusting God, we must trust in the fact not only God is omniscient, he's omnipotent, but God is immutable. God is immutable. What does that mean? That means that God never changes. That God always remains the same. 
that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. If God is love, then he's always full of love. If God is compassionate, then he's always full of compassion. If God is merciful, then he always remains merciful. If God is long-suffering, then he always suffers long with some of us. Hallelujah. If God is patient, amen, he's always patient. If God is faithful, then he remains faithful. Even when we're unfaithful, he remains faithful because that is who God is. God never changes. And if somebody, somebody there in that camp would have just remembered that fact, who God is, that it's not a time to fear, even though the natural tends to fear, but then you got to get a hold of yourself. You got you to get into that, that word, that prayer time, that stuff. You got to just stop for a moment, stand still, and remember, wait a minute, okay, this is what's happening, but who is God? Who is my God? Who am I to my God? I'm the apple of his eye. He's got his eye on this sparrow right here. Amen. And if he has his eye on me, then I have nothing to fear because God is God. And the same way, if God is immutable and God is God that never changes, then the same way that God forced Pharaoh and delivered me out of Egypt yesterday is the same God that can deliver me today. And he'll do it again tomorrow. Because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. He never changes. He never changes. He remains the same. He remains the same. So if God's going to move us forward, when we don't know how, we can't see it, we don't understand it, that's when we need to trust him. Because it's by faith, my friend, by faith in who God is that'll get you through. That'll get you through. The second thing is the way that God is going to get us through is not to panic. Don't panic. And see, that's our tendency. Human nature is to panic, when, especially those of us that like to be in control. See, God has a way of, 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 of letting things happen where you're out of control so that he can step in and be in control. And just like he told there in the scripture, because I, so that I can let Pharaoh and his people know who I am. Amen. I am the great I am. Amen. And so, so, so you see, many times we have to trust in the fact that God is God. Amen. And sometimes you just have to stand still. What did Moses tell him? You move forward. How are we going to move forward, Moses? You know, he says, he says, by not being afraid, but having faith. Secondly, by just standing still. But wait a minute, Moses. You're telling us to move forward, but stand still. You want us to stand still, or do you want us to move forward? And the reason why, because they were panicking. Some of them were ready to surrender. Some were ready to give back into the devil. They're ready to go back to the world because of the trial of life, because of the trials of, of, and tribulations they were facing even as a believer. Some were ready just to give up because they couldn't understand. They haven't come to that full knowledge of who God is, and that's understandable. They just came out of Egypt, but this is why you got to learn how to trust God, trust his word, and trust and listen to his prophets. Especially when you don't understand. That's the time, don't panic. Be careful what you say. You just got to stand still. Because they're ready to run. Ready to give in. He said, no, don't be afraid. Just stand still. Now that word stand still doesn't carry the idea or meaning of just sitting there and camping there. Oh, God, hope, hoping somehow God's going to get us through this. No, my friend. Remember, don't be afraid. Have faith. Faith is an action word, my friend. Faith is believing who God is. Faith is seeing what doesn't look too good, but knowing that God is good. 
and that God is with me and somehow God is going to get me through this. If he delivered me yesterday, he can do it again today. And he'll do it again tomorrow as long as I keep trusting him. Amen? So therefore, all I got to do is just stand still. And the meaning of standing still is that meaning that carries that, that root meaning of like a runner getting ready to run in the race. How many ever seen those runners get ready to run? They don't just, oh, okay, everybody, you know, get in line and we're going to start. And they just start running. No, they all go, there's a, there's a starting line. And they all get in their little lane right there and they get there and what do they say? Everybody get ready, get set. They're standing still, but they're not camping there. Because they got a goal in mind. They're going somewhere. There's a prize that they're running for. Can you say amen? How many know our prize is heaven? Our prize is our high calling in Christ Jesus. We're not just here serving and just beating the air and living life. No, we're here for a purpose. God saved us for a purpose. We were created for a purpose. Amen. Every one of us has an assignment here on life. I don't care what people told you, what the devil has said, if they called you an accident or you weren't supposed to happen or you don't know what your purpose is the devil's a liar God fearfully wonderfully created you and put you here on planet earth for a purpose and we are in this lay race this game of life running this race and we're not running just to run but we're running to receive a crown we're running to receive a prize like Paul said that's why I press toward the mark so the word stand still doesn't mean just camp there hoping things are going to get better. No, it's get ready, get set. And the moment that God moves, then you start moving, my friend. You start moving forward. You start going forward, my friend. That's what he's talking about. Just waiting on the Lord. Just stand still. Don't panic. Be careful what you start saying. Be careful who you start complaining about. Be careful. Muzzle the mouth. That's why he said, hold your peace. He even told her, hold your peace. Just don't be afraid. Just stand still. And you watch what God is going to do. Hallelujah. Somebody give God a praise. <laughs> Thirdly, the God's going to move us forward. By knowing that this battle is not ours, but his. By knowing that this fight is not your fight. Whatever you're facing, it's not your fight. A long time ago, God said, made a promise to his people. He said, those that contend with you contend with me, saith the Lord. Every person, every devil that tries to come against you and contend with you, they're contending with God. <laughs> Therefore, whatever fight, whatever battle, spiritual battle, spiritual fight you find yourself in, you have to remember as a believer, let me tell you something, because of who we are, because of our faith, because of our call, because of our destiny, because of our purpose in their life, let me tell you something, there is an enemy out there that's going to want to try and stop us. He's going to try and assault our faith. He's going to come against us. He's going to try and, 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 and do everything he can to keep us from moving forward. And sometimes not even the devil's involved. Sometimes, you know, we, you know, we're saying, oh, it's the devil. The devil's making me do it, man. The devil, man, the devil's after me. The devil's over here saying, I ain't got nothing to do with it, God. This one, this one's not, this is not me. That's on them. That's their own fleshly lust and desire that's getting them in trouble over there. Their own desire and their own purpose. They want to do their own thing. They want to serve you their own way. They want to do their own purpose. That's not me, God. I just thought I'd throw that one in for free. Amen. <laughs> but the battle's not yours. The battle is the Lord's. Remember when David fought Goliath. Remember when David fought Goliath? David was a young shepherd boy. And he was in the school of the Holy Ghost there in that shepherd field where he was learning how to trust God. He was building his relationship with God. 
Remember the lion and the bear came against him there in the shepherd field and he defeated the lion and the bear. And it was his older brothers that were there a part of Saul's army. And remember the story that the Philistines had come and they, were, they had the battle in array. Meaning that they had the, the Philistines on one side of the mountain, then there was a, gal, a little gully there, a valley, and then the Israelites were on the other side. And, and the Goliath, the giant, was the one that would come out every day and, 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 and talk smack. I mean, he would come out and he would threaten the children of Israel. He would, he would curse that their God, curse them. Amen. Tell them, you come out here, you send a warrior out here, you send somebody to come and fight. And if I win, and you, know, they, you have to serve us. If, 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 if you win, then we'll serve you. Remember that? Night and day, that giant would go out there and intimidate God's people. Now, here are these very well-trained, very well-equipped soldiers in the army of Saul. And the Bible says that every time that giant came out, they were afraid. Their faith was depleted. They were fearful, afraid, trembling. And, and David's brothers were a part of that army. Now, what happened was is that David's father calls David from the shepherd field and says, here, here's some bread, here's some cheese. Go to the front. Go to the battlefront and see how your brothers are doing and take them this bread and cheese. So David goes to the front lines of the battle. And it just so happens when David shows up, the timing of God, it just so happened that the same time David came on the scene, Goliath stepped out and came into the valley and started his, you know, selling wolf tickets again. Doing this for the home, amen. Started threatening, blurting out threats again. And here comes this young little whippersnapper, the young shepherd boy, on the scene, he hears this giant talking, cursing God, cursing the armies of Israel. And he's like, wait a minute, hold up. What's... And he's looking at all these well-trained, you know, uh, soldiers of the army of God there and they're afraid. Nobody's doing nothing. Little David's going around the camp probably saying, wait a minute, don't you hear what he's saying? Is anybody going to do anything? Is any, what, what's going on here? Don't you hear what this giant is saying against our God? Don't you hear these threats of, against us? Why isn't somebody saying nothing? And his own brother tried to quiet him. David, what are you doing over here? Who sent you over here? I know the pride of your heart, the arrogance of your heart. I, you, you just came over here to see the battle. And little David looked at that big brother, eyeball to eyeball. So, is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Somebody's got to do something to shut this big giant's mouth. So what does David do? He starts voicing victory. Now, the king, King Saul hears about it. That there's this kid over here who says that he'll go fight this giant. Saul sends for David. He says, you're going to fight this giant? You, you, you're nothing but a kid. You're nothing but a little whippersnapper here. He's been, he's been a man of war since, his, since he was a youth. And you're going to go fight him? And David does what every victory outreach man does. He starts to testify. He starts to testify. Oh, wait a minute. I, hold up, King Saul. I want you to know something. When I was out there in that ranch, out there in that desert, I want you to know when I didn't have some stuff or I heard my mama needed a miracle and the doctor said it was impossible, that there's no way possible that she can get a hit, that she was going to die of this sick. I want you to know that I went into that prayer closet and I got a hold of my God. And my God was more than able to slay not only the bear, but also the, the lion. And this big giant will just be like one of the lions and the bears. Because God doesn't change. He remains the same. He doesn't lose his power. No matter what situation it is. So Saul tried to put his armor on him. Remember that? Here, little boy with his big old armor. 
So I can't fight with this because nobody can fight in somebody else's armor. You got to learn how to tailor make your own armor. You got to learn how to identify what type of sword you're going to fight with. Amen. What type, what type of, what type of uniform you're going to put on. Amen. You know, you got to learn how to create your own armor. That's specially tailor-made for who you are in this fight, in this assignment in life. Somebody say amen. You can't fight in somebody else's anointing. You can't fight in somebody else's prayer. You can't fight in somebody else's. So David shook it off and took what he knew. And he got his little sling and he, got, and he went and picked five smooth stones. And it was David that stepped into that arena. Not these well-trained, looking pretty, looking good, with all their little medals. It was a little boy that had enough guts to step into that arena. Why do you think that was possible? Why do you think that was possible? I'll tell you what. The moment, see, David knew his word. When the Bible talks about his mother like, as a handmaid of the Lord, and it was mothers at that time that would, would I'm sure she was seeing her, her lullabies, lullabies were, was the word of God. And as growing up, she would teach him the word. David knew his word. So when he showed up in that scene and that giant showed up on the scene and he started talking those threats, blurting out those threats against God and against the people of Israel, the word kicked in. <laughs> Wait a minute. Doesn't the word of God say those that contend with me contend with you? What did God tell Abraham? Those that bless you, I will bless, but those that come against you come against me. That's what gave David that victory that day. It wasn't the sling. It wasn't the stone. It was his faith in the word of the living God. Because the moment that giant started talking out of the side of his neck, he said, you know what? That giant done crossed the line. That giant is a defeated foe already. Even before I step into this ring. You know why? Because he's contending with us. It was David's faith. He was able to step into that ring. And when that giant seen David, what in the world? What do you, like, what do you think, what do you think you're going to do? What do you think you're going to do? He says, I'm going to take your flesh and I'm going to feed it to the birds of the air and the animals of the field. And he started again on David. What did David do? He was intimidated. He didn't, didn't matter how big that giant was. Didn't matter how big that trial was. In fact, in David's mind, was probably the bigger, the better. He said, what are you thinking to do with a little, little, little sling and fire? Listen, I can't miss. You're too big to miss. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. <laughs> In other words, after he got done, you know, uh, with David belittling him, he said, you come to me with this and that and this little, little rock and sling, or whatever, I'm going to give your, your, your flesh to the birds. He, David says, no, wait a minute, no. You come to me with the javelin and the spear. He says, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. And today, because of your threats, God is going to give you into my hand today. God is going to give you into my hand today. So that all of Israel will know. Listen to this. And all the world may know that God is with us. I'm telling you, when God 
steps in, my friend. When you learn to trust in his word that if God is for us, who can be against us? That no weapon formed against us shall prevail and that those that contend with us contend with him. And when you understand that this fight, this battle is not mine, but it is God's. God is going to step in, my friend, and you're going to see the salvation of the Lord. I said, you're going to see the salvation of the Lord. You know why? So that all your family and all your loved ones will know that God is with you, that you're a man of God. You're a child of God. You represent the most high God. And all of Victory Outreach and all of the neighborhood and all of the city will know that there's a God in Victory Outreach. San Bernardino, to God be the glory. Oh, what the devil meant for evil. God has turned it around, B-O-S-B. God is with us. God is with us. And the best is yet to come. Don't be afraid. Just have faith. Just stand still and watch what God is going to do. The Lord's going to fight for you. The Lord is fighting for us, Victory Outreach, so we can move forward. We can move forward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel faith coming in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All of a sudden, the Egyptians closed in. There's the children of Israel. Their backs are up against the wall. Ever been there? Their backs are up against the wall. They couldn't turn to the right, to the left. They couldn't move forward. The Egyptians, the enemy's closing in. And then the Bible says this. All of a sudden, the angel of the Lord that was the point guard, that was leading God's people through the wilderness, the Bible says all of a sudden as the enemy came in like a flood. But always remember this. God will only let the enemy go so far. He could only go so far, my friend. Remember that. Sometimes you can feel him right there. Like he's breathing down your neck. But God will only let him go so far. What the devil men, men, means for evil, God will turn it around for the good. The enemy came closing in. And as the enemy got close... They got so close, but yet God kept them so far. Because the angel of the Lord that was leading them shifted from the front guard and became their rear guard. So the enemy couldn't come any closer to them. He can get this close, but he couldn't touch them. And the Bible says that he provided fire for light on the children of Israel, but darkness on them. They couldn't even see them. Amazing. As to say, Israel, don't you worry about a thing. No matter how close the enemy comes in, like a flood, I got your back. I got your back. How many know victory outreach? God has our Hallelujah. He's got our back. You know why? So that we don't have to be looking back. We don't have to look to the left or to the right, my friend, because we trust in our God that God has our back. We can keep looking forward to the prize, keep our eyes focused on the vision, and keep moving forward. Oh, somebody got to give God a shout. Somebody got to give him a praise. God has your back, Victory Outreach. I don't know who I'm talking to here this morning. I don't know who this message was for this morning. But God has your back. 
Don't be afraid. Just have faith. Trust him. Just stand still and watch what God is going to do. And when God moves, you move forward. And you do what God called you to do. You put your hands to the plow and you fulfill every promise and every assignment that God has for you. And don't have, you don't have to look back, my friend, because he has your back. God has your back. God has your back. God has your back. God has your back. You just move forward. Come. Come. That's it. Come. He has your back. He's with you. God is with you. Those that contend with you, contend with your mighty God. You're his child. You're his son. You're his daughter. We are his children. He never changes. He remains the same. He is with us. He is with us. God is with us. God is with you. God is with you. God is with you.